Well met my friends, Nexius here, and today we are going to a blast from the past with the warrior quests before they were removed in Cataclysm. Some of you may remember some of these quests, for example, learning defensive stance, learning berserker stance, and achieving the greatest two-handed weapon around level 40, and one of the coolest armors where you can gain 30 rage an hour, unfortunately, but nonetheless a very memorable armor, a very memorable two-handed weapon. And some of these quests were just, I mean, it's a very big memory for a lot of warrior players out there. So today I want to cover some of these quests. And this one here that we're taking a look at is the level 10 warrior quest for the Night Elves. This one is where you learn your defensive stance. So you just simply find this guy by a moon well, and then you simply take care of him. And you receive not only your defensive stance, but you also receive some other protection related abilities such as taunt and whatnot. So this one is actually very simple. This is similar to the rogue quest that I showed uh, the other day there um, with the simple scouting mission. Unfortunately, this one isn't as cool as the rogue level 10 mission because all you do is simply kill a mob. So there's nothing actually different about this particular quest. Um, when you do the rogue one, you actually have to stealth. You have to pickpocket. So you actually use rogue elements in your uh, class's toolkit in order to achieve that. If you're a hunter, you get to tame a pet, which is all about hunters as well. So the warrior quest isn't exactly special, it's just like a generic quest. But you do get to learn your defensive stance, your taunts, under armor, all that different stuff. So it's still kind of memorable. So I did want to actually showcase this one because it still is a warrior quest where you learn some new abilities. Such as, as I mentioned, defensive stance. Uh, and then of course, it's not a warrior quest without actually being able to pick up a weapon afterwards. So here, after you um, achieve your defensive stance... Uh, you get sent into Darkshore here and you pick up some Elunite Ore, which is an interesting type of ore, I guess in the Night Elf area. And then of course you have to defeat the Shade of Allura, you get her medallion and this will help towards crafting your weapon as well. So overall we're just taking a look here, um, nothing too special here honestly. Um, funny thing, I actually completely forgot about this, but interesting note, if it's like a spirit or even elements, like um, say a wind elemental, you can't rend them. So I remember those days where... Uh, you couldn't rent certain targets. If you were a fire mage, you couldn't actually do fire damage to fire elementals. Man, I do not miss those aspects of Vanilla WoW, but I actually didn't play in Vanilla. I played in um, BC and then Wrath, so I, I do remember a lot of it was very similar in BC. I don't remember when they took that away. It might have been like sometime in Wrath or something, but I do remember in BC, uh, those were definitely some elements when I was leveling a mage. Um, but as you can see here, after you pick up the Elunite or uh, you defeat uh, the chick that's by the bow. I already forgot her name because I wasn't really paying attention. My bad. But after you defeat her and you pick up the Elden Knight Ore, you get to pick a weapon of your choice. Now, if you pick the dagger, you are making the worst trade deal ever. Just period. Never pick up the dagger. So you can pick up the one-handed sword, the one-handed axe. I generally go with the sword here, as you see, because I already leveled up that skill with my previous sword. Uh, back in these days, we did have weapon skill. And if you're like 1 out of 75, you're going to miss a lot. So you have to re-level that weapon skill. So I did go with the sword to save that. Now, a couple levels later, at level 16, you can actually go to Lakeshire here. Um, your warrior trainer will send you here, and you get to see Yoris Barleybrew. So, of course, the dwarf that he is, he has an interesting little drunken game that he wants to play, and that is the Rethbend Gauntlet, he calls it. So, he takes warriors like ourselves, novice warriors, and he gets us drunk, so we have to actually get drunk with him. And then he sends us on the gauntlet, which is to simply go check out the cave north of Lakeshire. And all you have to do is take a step in and run right back. It sounds like a, you know, like a young childhood game, right? Where you like take a step into the haunted house and then quickly leave. Well, it's like one of those. So here we are. We have to go north of Lakeshire here. Now the catch here is it's not a haunted house. It's a cave full of gnolls. So the haunting is actually real here. We have real um, dangers here. So of course it's a bit of a pain. Um, the mystics for sure do a lot of damage, so um, you're going to have to, you know, do the typical warrior class fantasy. Everyone knows about warriors in vanilla, where you have to kill one, eat, kill one, eat, kill one. You have to do a lot of eating, so as you can see here, you just want to go straight into the cave, take a step, and then run right out. And you have a whole hour to do this. An hour is plenty of time, man. It is really not that uh, long of a quest. It's like five minutes, as you can see here. I'm already in the cave. It's not even been five minutes yet. I'll take a step in, basically step out, and then you turn it in. Now that's the easy part of this warrior part of the um, warrior quest line. The hard part is going to be after this one. So here we are just finishing off this knoll. Now of course, the knoll's gonna run away, so I just decided to say screw it, let's get out. Let's just leave, not gonna aggro one or two other knolls and then die. As you can see, he aggroed the other one. Now here we actually go back, 
Um, we get a cask of Scalder, which um, Yors tells us to send to him. So Fern here, we send the um, alcohol to him and he makes us a nice little shield as a reward. So again, it's not a warrior quest unless you're getting a weapon or a shield or something. So this time we get a shield and Fern is like, you know, man, I can make so much better. I can definitely make you a very nice chest piece. You know, if you bring me all of the materials, I will show you my skills in blacksmithing. So now we have to go collect a lot of materials, as you can see. Spider fangs, uh, charred horns, a galvanized horn, and a vial of phlogiston. I, I hope I pronounced that right. Phlogiston. So we have a lot to do, and it seems like it's not going to be that difficult. But not only is it 50 spider fangs, but each material is spread across the entire world. And this is what's great about these quests, because these are such low level so early on in the game that you're already being promoted to explore the entire world whereas it's a bit different with uh current world of warcraft where you have to just simply stay in an instance or whatever so here we go as you guys saw there i was looking at the map you have to go from stormwind all the way to iron forge and then you have to travel through the dwarven lands to the wetlands and then you find this cave here in the wetlands and you have to kill 50 of these spiders so once you've killed the 50 spiders here as you can see here this is the last one i'm not going to show every kill of course uh what we have here is the 50th fang i believe so we pick it up there we go one part of the quest is complete so now we have to look at his other instructions the spider fangs are done now we have to go oh my lord we have to go all the way to stone talon mountains now so we have to go you know from booty bay for example you can take the boat as you can see right there i'm circling it you go all the way to booty bay so fly back to stormwind go to booty bay if you haven't been there yet then you go to the barrens which will take you to ratchet or booty bay will take you to ratchet which is in the barrens now you have to go through the barrens to the stone town you have to go through most all the way around the mountains and stone town to the charred vale and this is where you will find the next two pieces so by farming the chimeras here you will get the 12 that you need the 12 horns and then on top of that you also have to kill a matriarch chimera which will give you the one galvanized horn so those are going to be two of the uh remaining three so you have the first one done the spider fangs apparently something to do with the poison the uh, venom and the fang itself turns into a hardened substance which can coat the armor make it much tougher then you want the horns and stuff because they are you can basically grind them up and it turns into some kind of like other material and then you just put it over the armor as a again basically so it's a bunch of like lubricant kind of that goes over the armor at least that's what the dwarf was saying um in terms of why this armor is so great so basically you want to get a lot of chimera stuff you want the spider fangs and the spider venom as well and now finally we have to go to razor fan crawl so we have to go back to the barrens we have to go all the way south to the barrens not into the thousand needles but southern edge of the barrens we have to go in here with a group and then you have to kill this guy who is not really part of the dungeon so you have to actually ask your group is it okay if we go out of the way to defeat this guy so after you kill him you basically loot his phlogistane and some kind of material um, that only he makes apparently which is I mean, first of all, I'm kind of curious how this dwarf knows this one quill bore specifically knows how to make it. How does he know that information? That's what I really want to know. He's apparently the only thing or only guy thing, whatever you want to call him, that makes that particular substance and he needs to get it from him. How does he know that? Anyway, irrelevant. Now we get to have the armor itself. We brought him all the materials. Here we go. This will stand up to the strongest assault or my name isn't Fern Longbeard. So there we go. Fire hardened hauberk very nice armor piece early on in the game about level 30 is when you actually will eventually get it unless someone carries you through razor fan crawl or through stone talon mountains because you have to be about 26 ish to actually survive there but there's the new armor as you can see right there so that's one of the biggest early on quests that everyone i'm sure remembers now we get to everyone's favorite part i'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for this part this one everyone remembers so when you hit about say level 36 or so you get a quest to go to an interesting island i believe it's called the fray island and that's over by ratchet so if you were doing the fire hardened hauberk um quest already you should already have been to ratchet and everything so you should be okay uh with getting there so it's just south of ratchet very easy once you get there just you know taking the view it looks really awesome this is like a gladiator warrior order hall basically it's like the warrior order hall before legion uh, you have all these different warriors here fighting uh dueling and that's actually what you're going to be doing in a second here so we actually end up going to talk to this guy um fun little fact the guy that we're about to talk to is a reference to highlander you can tell by the armor and as well as the sword and his name as well so we talk to him this is where we will not only get a awesome two-handed weapon but we will also learn intercept and berserker stance so in order to learn this stuff we actually have to do a nice couple 1v1s in this arena here so we have to sit and wait for the affray to begin as it's starting to begin you kill a couple of random guys and then you kill another big guy at the end as you guys will see right here 
So we get a bunch of random challengers, you know, you just slowly take them out little by little. Now these guys are around 26, so actually I'm a bit higher than uh, expected here. I believe it starts at 30, but something like that. They're also lower level because you have to kill them all while still in combat. So of course they're going to make it a little bit easier. Now we have the level 33 guy in here, and we have to take out Big Will here. If there's a will, there's a way, and there's definitely going to be a way to defeat this guy easily. Just spam Heroic Strike, lots of skill here. Use my major cooldown here. And there we go, simple, very easy uh, fight there. And once again, here we go, here's where the punchline comes in. This is the easy part, getting the actual two-handed weapon, that's where the hard part's gonna come in. Just like the armor previously, now we're gonna have some difficulty in a second. So, all done, you are a worthy warrior and I am honored to teach you. So, there we go, there's now the Wind Watcher. So we have to go speak to a troll up in Hillsbrad Foothills, where he is not only a very good weapon maker, but he's also a shaman, so he can enchant our weapon. And that's where the upcoming uh, quest line is going to be. So again, now you have to travel across the world again, as usual, meet the troll in north of Tarn Mill, north of Hillsbrad Foothills. You'll see him along the river, and he wants you to basically farm some charms from elementals in Arathi Highlands. So now you have to go to the zone next door, more traveling. And you have to defeat a couple of these elementals at the stones. You need a, about eight or so of each stone or each charm, and there are three. There's the water, the fire, and the thunder. So you want to get a couple of these. Once you've got eight of each, you now return to them. You throw it in the cauldron, and that will summon the big elemental known as Cyclonian. So this is the whole reason why he wants you to do this. He wants to get Cyclonian's essence, and he will use that essence right here. So you can, act, or not this one, this is going to summon Cyclonian. Now you need to defeat Cyclonian, and that's why the troll is actually here by the river. He said that he's been here for a long time, waiting for an adventurer, specifically a warrior hopefully, to defeat Cyclonian. He wants to watch Cyclonian's fall. Uh, keep in mind, this troll is a shaman, so he's going to be using his essence to actually imbue your weapon because shamans actually know how to imbue weapons i'm sure that's common knowledge to you guys but you know i'm just going to throw it in there just for fun fact anyway so now i'm just trying to figure out what to talk about here while we wait for this oh, this is um i'm sure you guys remember these days too the super long um escorts so he's going to be taking a long time so we're going to speed this up because anyone remember um John J. Keishan in Red Ridge Mountains, the dude in the cave with the Black Rock Orcs, longest escort quest ever. This guy takes a while to walk over. He's summoning Cyclonian now with the charms and that essence. And now we have to defeat Cyclonian and we have to collect his essence. The troll will make our weapon and then he will enchant it with Cyclonian's essence. So this guy's very difficult. So we're just gonna speed across this a little bit. He's level 43. So you probably won't actually get this two-hander for quite a while. Um, you start the quest about, say, level 30-ish or so, and then you might be almost 40, maybe even 40 or higher, depending on um, your skill level and gear and all that different stuff. Um, but eventually you will uh, defeat him. You pick up his Whirlwind Heart, which he will now use to imbue your weapon because shamans are going to shaman. Uh, so now we get to head over. Let's fast forward this. And now we get to choose between three different weapons. We have an awesome two-handed axe, a two-handed sword, and a two-handed mace. Now, there are two reasons why you want to pick the axe. First of all, the axe looks way cooler out of the other three. And the second reason, which is the more logical reason, it has the slowest attack speed. Notice the sword is 290. I forget what the Warhammer was. I think it was 210 or something like that. And then the axe is 360. As a warrior, you want slow weapons because your weapon swings will do a lot more damage. And our abilities, our abilities as a warrior uh, does weapon damage plus, say, 23. So Heroic Strike, for example, will deal weapon damage plus 23. Uh, cleave, same thing. You strike a target and the nearest target for weapon damage plus 23. So you will do more damage on your abilities. And since they're slower attack speed, they have more weapon damage. So you get more value out of your rage spent. So that's why you want the two-handed axe. But um, overall, these are the popular, memorable warrior quests from back in the day. Overall, I very much enjoyed the quest lines, checking out the memory of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A nice little throwback to the past, and I'll see you next time.